From inside the fitting room, Jeremy Lovett heard boots tracking slush into the store, the squeak of rubber on tile. A cheesy jazz saxophone rendition of White Christmas played from the mall's speakers. Lovett was down to his underwear, red plaid boxers with a button missing, and the sight in the mirror of his body in mammalian swells around his underwear startled him. The hair on his head and face had gone shock white in his 20s before he'd met Marilyn, and by 45, he'd stopped shaving and grown a beard to hide his neck. His belly jostled the seats in front of him on airplanes, blocked his few of his shoelaces, and rested on Marilyn's back when they made love in certain positions. His daughters, whose birthdays had suddenly turned them baffling ages, 20 and 21, had smaller breasts than he did. Lovett didn't like to think about his daughter's breasts, but the fact remained. An explosive knock shook the door to the stall. Rock and roll, Santa C, 15 minutes. Lovett recognized Joseph Crown's voice from the phone. He pulled on an undershirt and the enormous fur furry trousers. Big night, Lovett said through the door, snapping his red suspenders. Crown's shoes appeared to be made from a potato sack. The biggest, Crown said. Woo, fucking Christmas Eve, man. Levitt watched his brow furrow in the mirror as he buttoned the inside of his coat. He slid the lock aside and assessed the young man before him. Crown wore a cyborg headset and held a silver bullet caffeine drink in a freckled hand. His pompadour flopped on his forehead when he adjusted the drop of aluminum in front of his mouth. He was not tall, but had the solid shoulders of a wrestler, a necklace of seashell shards around a flexed neck, a hunter green polo shirt with a collar up. You're the manager, Levitt said. Sometime over the past few months, it had occurred to Levitt that the men and women who poured his coffee, answered his calls and customer service, handled his bank accounts, his money, were not much older than his daughters, which meant he was living in an entire world of children. Shaggy-haired kids with their eyes glued to tiny screens made of liquid crystals, if you could believe that. Crown looked Lovett over and let out a whistle. Whoa, you really look like him. That's your real beard? Randy had a fake. How old are you? 26. Been at the North Book Branch eight years, manager for two. He registered a phone call, his eyes fixed somewhere in the air between them, and held up a finger. Santa, I gotta take this. See you in 10. Remember your cue? You better watch out, Lovett said. Crown snapped his fingers into a gun. As his voice drifted toward the sales floor, a belt buckle hit the floor in a stall nearby. Hangers slid down a rack. Lovett pulled on the beautiful coat and shook out the hat. The night before, Marilyn had bleached the food stains out of his mustache with a toothpick and massaged silk protein serum into his beard. While pampering, she seemed to forget the canyon between them. The steel in her eyes vanished. Then later it returned, and they became strangers again in their marriage of 25 years, polite in the most excruciating ways. Lovett popped two Altoids in his mouth and stuffed his jeans and triple XL sweatshirt into Jane's old backpack. The new assassin's doll, what was her name? Nunchuck Nancy, he said aloud. Then he raised his eyebrows and curled the ends of his mouth skyward. He held his arms akimbo, resting his hands on his belly. He practiced just once, softly. Ho, ho, ho. Before heading out to the ground floor, he glanced in the mirror and his breath caught in his throat. In profile, with Jane's backpack slung over his shoulder like that, he could have sworn he was real. Thank you.